All right, guys, today we're gonna to talk about the first of the 10 pieces of equipment that I would take if I was on a loan. Now, a little quick preface to this, I do as much as I would love the idea of going on a loan, unfortunately, my life definitely prohibits it, but I still thought it'd be fun and I always get comments of like, what are, what are the equipment or pieces or items you take? And I think it's interesting because everyone has their own perspectives and strategies to survival and ultimate wilderness living. And I think that's an important distinction when it comes to things like a loan. You know, there's more of an emphasis on actually living in the wilderness as opposed to sheer survival. So oftentimes on the channel, we talk a lot about survival and what that kind of boils down to or what that looks like is, you know, how can you um, affect your survival or how can you affect your rescue? So in survival, it's not how long you, can you last, but how fast can you get rescued? Whereas in alone, it's really how long can you last? So there's that, and of course, too, alone takes place on a wide variety of different environments, temperatures, seasons, and so, of course, this isn't a strict rule. I would have to know absolutely where I was going before I could delineate what exact tools I would take. However, this kit, or the 10 items I'll go over in these two videos, is meant to kind of break down the most generalized use situations and cases. So this would cover the most or the broadest spectrum of reality. So anyways, with that out of the way, let's jump right into it with first off and foremost, the knife. Now for me, I would carry something like my Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. And that's not only because I'm very experienced and feel very comfortable with this knife, but I feel like, as I've mentioned in other videos, the CRK Pacific is just a really good general purpose, general use knife. It is going to be able to handle primarily the larger tasks, things like fire building, shelter building, those most important tasks will be able to be handled by something like a heavier duty, little bit larger kind of general purpose um, utility slash survival knife like the Pacific. Next up on the list is going to be an ax. Now, an ax is not something like, once again, if I was going to a jungle type environment or a very, you know, kind of like a rainforest, I might not choose an ax, but something like an ax, generally speaking, in most high alpine, arid environments, where there are a decent amount of trees is going to be one of your best tools and i would definitely choose something like this scandy forest axe by gba because the scandy forest axe blends a really good mixture of you know size like it's still a 25 inch handle two pound head so it's going to be able to take down a lot of the trees that you're realistically going to be going after so obviously this isn't going to be able to take down something like a redwood but at the same time too when you're looking at you know uh, the types of trees and thickness and size that you're going to be using to build shelters you know you would be nice to be able to build a log cabin but in all reality you're probably going to be building a rather basic shelter so that's where something like the scandy forest axe is going to work really really well and once again it's still also very man portable very easy to wield and use so that is the axe for the choice now the next one up is going to be the saw and what i have here is the silky gone boy in all reality i would probably take either like a 30 inch bow saw 24 inch bow saw which i do have um, this, this just fits better in this kind of setup or i would take something like a silky um, big boy like i said the gone boy is here more just as a placeholder because it fits in this frame more easily than my bigger saws but even if I had to, I feel like the Gone Boy would actually do pretty well because this Gone Boy is capable, once again, of taking down those six or two inch in diameter to six inch diameter trees. And that's where the vast majority of your, you know, firewood is going to be harvested and your um, shelter kind of wood is going to be harvested is going to be within that range. All right, the last of the tools, strictly speaking, is going to be the Leatherman Surge. And the Surge, and the Surge is a knife, or sorry, a multi-tool that has already been featured by others on a loan. And I think for good purpose, as many people I'm sure that are watching this are well aware, the Surge is just such a capable multi-tool. Like this is the king of multi-tools. Um, and part of that is due to its size and its overall robustness. Like this is a heavy duty built multi-tool, but also it's very rare feature of this interchangeable blade or kind of just T-shank adapter makes 
makes it very capable of accepting a wide variety of alternative tools. So things like longer saw lengths, things like other blades, just this one system right here alone gives this tool a wide variety of usefulness. And so the Surge would be one that I would have to take for that reason specifically, it's so capable. And once again, it is a bigger multi-tool, so it's going to be able to do a little bit more robust tasks. All right, the last of the five is going to be my Titanium Vargo Bot. And the Bot, of course, has to be on the list because it is just a supremely capable, like this is like the multi-tool, in my opinion, of watertight vessels or containers because it is not only a bottle because it is a watertight, you know, sealed system, but also too, it functions very well as a pot um, because it's essentially like an ultra wide mouth bottle. Uh, so you can do things like make tea, make coffee, make stews, make um, soups. You can do all those kinds of things with the bot. And then on top of that, you can also use it to hold and carry water. So if you are next to a water source and you need to bring water to your camp, something like the bot works well because it is a sealed unit that you can use to transport water. Now, obviously this is only a liter in size, so you're not gonna be transferring like gallons of water, but you know, for like realistic life needs, um, this is going to be able to do that pretty darn well. So that's why I would choose the bot. Um, it's also, as you guys can well see, a very well loved and used platform by me because of its supreme versatility. All right, guys, those are my top five pieces. And the largest emphasis I put on these top five pieces is really things that are very hard to replicate. All of these tools that you see, especially things like saws, multi-tools, are not things you're gonna be able to make out in the field with basic or primitive tools. And so having these tools allows you to not only have a significant leg up in the fact that these tools are going to be hard to replicate, but also to that with these tools specifically, like with things like the multi-tool, with things like the saw, the ax, you're going to be able to craft other tools that you can use for things like hunting, trapping, fishing, and be able to attain those other parts that are in the a necessity to life. So, you know, like with an ax and a knife and probably even a saw, uh, you know, you can use those things to build a primitive bow or a, you know, survival bow. So would it be nice to be able to take something like a bow or a rifle, firearm, you know, into the field to hunt? Yes, but these tools allow you to create some of those more basic tools that you can use or turn around and use for other parts of survival. And so that's why I place a higher emphasis on these tools over, you know, just picking things like cordage, like paracord would be great. It would be nice, it'd be useful, but you can also use these very tools you see to make those, um, to make things like cordage. So anyways, guys, that kind of sums up the reason of why I chose these, or that's kind of my rationale to it. As always, guys, I would always appreciate feedback. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. God bless, and I'm out.